हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल थैंक यू गाइस फॉर बिलीविंग सो मच इन द ट्वेंटी नोटबुक पार्ट वन सो प्रेजेंटिंग टू यू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट दैट इज ट्वेंटी नोटबुक पार्ट टू सो इन दिस आई हैव ट्राइड टू इनकल्केट वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट हाई रिपीटेड टॉपिक्स दैट कैन बी आस्क इन योर एग्जाम द फ्रिक्वेंटली वॉलेटाइल टॉपिक्स ओके सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद द वीडियो इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल गाइज प्लीज subscribe to the channel and do watch the previous videos they will definitely give a boost to your preparation so now let's get started with our motto for today first of all guys okay so we are starting with the topic of plant poison so how does how does the question comes in your, comes in your exam so you'll you will find a image based question guys where you need to identify guys okay so this is a photo where i have tried to inculcate all the image okay so the uh, topic of the snake and the topic of the seeds okay see when we talk about the snake guys okay so uh, we have like three families for the snake that that is your elapidae family hydropidae family and, and your and one and one more family that is your viperidae family guys okay so see this elapidae family is basically the neurotoxic snakes ka category okay neurotoxic snake ka category that is your this neurotoxic snake that is your cobra and crate okay remember both sounds like c that is your cns effect wala uh, toxic then viper guys remember v for viper v for vampire that sucks blood that is this is a vascular toxic snake ka category okay and this hydropidae hydro means water if you see the image of a snake in water that is sea snake don't don't get confused guys okay so what does this vascular toxic does okay that affects the blood vessel so there will be severe local reaction edema and necrosis and it will cause anticoagulant effect as a result leading to widespread bleeding which causes neurotoxic here the local reaction will be very less but can lead to muscle paralysis eventually and this hydropidae they are myotoxic means affecting on the muscle as a result they cause you generalized rhabdomyolysis okay so now coming on to how to how to identify this snakes the next important point come okay guys so see if we have a look at the snake see we have cobra two types common cobra and the king cobra so the king who are king they don't uh, they don't need to wear a specs everyone can recognize them without that also so they are without a spectacle mark that is your king cobra the one which has a spectacle mark that is your common cobra common people need to wear a spect okay so see this is your cobra then if you see this guys this has a v shaped mouth v for vascular toxic wala means viper wala snake and it has and it has rose guys okay if you see the design guys okay it has rose that is a russell viper that is three rows of diamond shaped black or brown spot and common crate okay crate looks like if you write it looks like straight that is striations are present all over the body of the crate that is your crate which is again a neurotoxic snake see this is the spectacle mark that is same means this is a common cobra not a king cobra here you have no spectacle mark so see you can see this is the king cobra okay so if we talk about the poisonous and the non poisonous snake guys okay so see what happens in cobra the third or uh, the third label touches the eye guys okay c for cobra c for uh, c for third letter that is third label touches the eye and if you talk about the crate guys okay here you have fourth being the largest in the crate again this is important that can be asked you if if the snake is a poisonous snake guys you will have long and canalized uh, fangs okay like a hypodermic needle that will go inside and non poisonous will have a short and solid uh, solid uh, fangs guys okay this is important uh, from your uh, from your snake cut uh, so let's see the image guys see here you see the presence of a spectacle mark that is it means it's a common cobra no spectacle mark that is your king cobra here you see striations that is your crate here you see colored striation like like you have put a bandage so we name it banded crate here you see v shaped mouth and your uh, three rows of scales that is your v shaped snake viper or vascular toxic then this this is in water sand you can see that is sea snake that comes under myotoxic category okay so this was about your snake now coming on guys to the next part that is your seeds wala part okay so before doing the seeds wala part will will do in the form of a table so that you guys know what to remember guys okay so i had made a three category one is the plant poison one is the cardiac poison another one is the spinal poison guys okay so this are basically the three category in which we'll be talking about see abrus precatorius so how you can remember okay abrus precatorius remember i remember it like a prick okay so you are pricking someone okay so this resembles a sui okay fine when you are trying to pre, uh, prick someone it can be arrow also guys okay and this sui can kill the cattle remember like this so this is a idle cattle poison and 
the uh, anti abrin okay and this abrus precatorius okay resembles the viper again this is important guys this abrus precatorius how does if you try to look guys how does it look this abrus precatorius here you have a black okay and all around guys inside it's, it's filled with red color if you look at the image guys which i'll be showing you now okay so this is about your abrus means like at the eye at the eye guys you have this looks like a eye guys okay that it is black in the middle so this is also known as ratti gucci rosary bead indian liquidity so these are the other names of your abrus what is the active principle abrus abrin no confusion now ricinus communis guys okay so remember this ricinus is a sinus okay remember it like a sinus so this is sinusoid guys okay so this is a sinusoid this is also known as castor or your arundi okay so this um, active principle guys r4 ricinus r4 ricin guys no confusion entire plant is poisonous guys here okay and what is this is a tox albumin guys okay so see we have three seed okay so remember acr american college of rheumatology guys one is abrus one is your croton and one is your ricin guys abrus is like iwala seed okay so here the fatal dose is one seed this croton guys that is your non shiny wala seed this one you see guys jamal gota that is your five seed and your resin guys okay the fatal dose is 10 seed guys this shiny wall seed is your resin seed now coming on to the semi carpus anacardium so how, how i have remembered this carpus i have remembered mark okay mark okay so this mark means this is also known as your marking nut guys and here the active principle is bilavinol so this is also known as bilavin okay and the active principle can also be semi carpus the name hence the name semi carpal so remember guys if you look at the uh, look guys at the image it looks something like this at the tip like a pen cut tip is there so this is used for marking guys okay so hence known as the marking nut this mark you can also use to create artificial bruise guys okay so this is the artificial bruise by the washerman okay conjunctivitis and this is also used as abortifacient guys so what is the difference between your artificial bruise and the normal bruise guys okay when you have artificial bruise guys it is due to some chemical irritant so all around you will have ves vesicles and inflammation but in normal bruise vesicles and inflammation will be absent because you don't have any chemical irritant this is also a pyq now coming on to the calotropis guys okay so this calotropis is known as arc madar guys this you this you might have seen the flower that is worshipped to your uh lordish shiva, shiva okay so this is your calotropis here active principles calotropis calotropin calotoxin and usharin these are the active principle and this is used for infanticide guys okay juices mis mis mixed film now coming to croton which is known as jamal gota or the nepala guys okay so these are lusterless said and what is the what is the active principle guys that is crotin which is again a tox albumin like your resin wall acid guys okay and see uh, and crotosonide or crotonolic acid what this jamal gota you might you might have heard jamal gota in so many movies this is a purgative okay seeds resemble the rice ricin acid do you see the seeds resemble the same but just ricin is shiny seed and this croton is non shiny seed and skin vesicant act as an acid now coming on to the capsicum capsicum and i'm also known as the chili seeds guys okay so uh if you see this causes hanan syndrome guys this is again a pyq that is contact dermatitis guys okay people spray it can be it is similar to the datura seed guys okay and if you look close Closely, guys at the image okay see this looks like a uh, embryo embryo guys inside do you see this looks like a embryo so that is a uh, six shape embryo is seen inside guys this is again important now coming on to cardiac poison so what are the car first is digitalis oleander neria manure aconite cardona okay so that is your cardiac poisoning now coming to aconite guys okay so this is basically the aconite root wise guys that resembles like a radish guys okay and this are the aconite flowers so this is called by various names like monk hood, meetha jar, bees, wolf bin. Okay, queen of all poison guys, no need to remember everything. Just have a read one. Active principle aconitin guys. Okay, roots resembles horse radish guys. How does this affect guys? Okay, so remember this aconite is like a guys you have gone to uh, see a uh, means have a concert guys. Okay, so their paresthesia of the mouth and the tongue guys. Hyper salivation because that's too cold. Hypotension, hypothermia and this is very important guys. Hippus and hypothermia are very important guys and this is the most ideal homicidal poison. Again, this is a PYQ. Okay, now coming on to the nerium odorum. So this is basically your nerium odorum ke flowers, guys. Okay, the flowers that you see. So this is known as nerium odorum is so uh, known as your white oriented, guys. If you know, guys, near uh, near guys in Sanskrit it means water, guys. So water looks white in color. Okay, remember like this. 
what is the active principle nerium for nerine and odorum for olanderine this is a cardiac glycoside that is similar to desitalis okay then cerebra thebacea guys okay so this is this is the flowers of cerebra thebacea the guy the flower that you might have seen guys okay so this is known as yellow oleander guys you look at the image so active principle is thevitin and thevitoxin guys again the same thing then desitalis purpurea guys okay so this is also known as purple fox glove do you look at the flower guys that looks like a purple fox glove okay or looks like a woman who is ready that is known as ladies lady glove okay so active principle digitoxin uh, digitalin digitonin guys so and here the treatment is diziband that is a antibody against the digoxin poisoning guys okay this is again important that you need to know guys here okay so see now coming on to the next one guys then we'll look at the images once again guys strychnis nux vomica guys okay so basically what happens this uh, this toxin acts similar to the tetanus toxin guys but tetanus acts pre-synaptically guys and this act post-synaptically guys okay so it inhibits the release of glycine and GABA guys as a result there is uh, as a result there is opisthotonus pleurostotonus that is bending like the, like the tetanus guys okay see this act on the anterior dentro cells of the spinal cord uh, but this is post-synaptic block guys Con convulsion resembles this um, tetanus okay you can have opisthotonus epistotonus pleurostotonus guys okay so remember after e what comes f the so epis uh, improstotonus is the forward bending p after p p L that is this is the lateral banding guys okay and what is the test done guys you have some test like uh, Witzel test and this is not so important guys no need to remember guys here like the tetanus you can have rise the sardonicus guys okay and the fatal dose is one crush seed guys again important so this was about your spinal poison now coming on to the next one guys seeing the images guys this is abras precatorius guys okay that is ratti or gucci looks like a eye guys okay this is croton that is your uh, mother luster less said the sinusates is the resinous cassette guys semi carpus anacardium do you see it looks like a penca tip guys the marking wall tip that is semi carpus anacardium this is strychnine nux vomica guys okay so this looks like a rbc wall thing okay this calotropis arc or madar guys already done abortifacient guys this econite mitha jahar bish hippus and low bp causes guys and this is conium maculate guys the uh, the poison that killed the socrates guys okay so this is again important thing that you need to know now coming on to the next frequently repeated guys i, I cannot just say you how many times this topic has been repeated guys okay in every other exam guys every year you'll see this question be it inct fmg need guys so this is very very important see First of all, this is the classical photo that you, that has been taken from Robbins, guys. Okay, so see, we need to identify with the help of the vegetation, guys. See, rheumatic heart disease, guys. Along the line of closure, how do you see, guys? Vegetation that is a small vegetation, firm vegetable vegetation, guys. It's very less friable, guys. Okay, along the line of your closure, and this is sterile. Name only infective endocarditis means the vegetations are non sterile. And how do you look at the vegetation, guys? They are large, bulky, irregular, frail vegetation. So they can, uh, they can, uh, matter this, uh, this loss of the valve, guys. Okay. And this uh, involves not only the valve curves but the mural endocardium also. Then non bacterial thrombotic endocarditis, guys. If you look at these two images, guys, both of them look the same, guys, along the lines of closure only. But this vegetations are slightly larger this non-bacterial thromb uh, thrombotic endocarditis guys okay the the similar thing only guys and uh, limb sac endocarditis guys so remember this like as a lsc that is lower lower surface axis guys okay vegetations are on both upper and lower surface guys but lower surface is more guys that is important here so ls sle this is seen in sle that is systemic lupus endocar uh, systemic lupus erythematosus guys okay so here you need to fulfill four out of 11 criteria guys and if you rearrange it guys this comes to lsc that is limb and sac endocarditis guys uh, that is that is a vegetation now coming on to the image guys if you see if you see at this image guys so you have large frail warty vegetation that is infective endocarditis and if it infiltrates the wall guys that is known as the ring abscess now see if you look at this photo the entire valve has been thickened guys okay so that is basically a fist mouth appearance and here it is along the lines of the closer guys okay so a small vegetation that is rheumatic heart disease then non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis again it's the uh, it's the line of closure the, but the valves are not so thickened guys so the, this is non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis also known as marientic endocarditis again a pyq that you need to know guys 
ओके सो सी दैट इज बेसिकली द सेम थिंग गाइज विच वी हैव रिटर्न गाइज ओके सो देर इज नो डिफरेंस द सेम थिंग हैज बिन रिटर्न गाइज इम्बोलाइजेशन इज वेरी कॉमन इन योर इन्फेक्टिव एंडोकार्डाइट इज वेरी कॉमन गाइज वाई बिकॉज द वेजिटेशन आर सो फ्रायल गाइज ओके दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट एल एस सी बोथ सर्फेस ऑफ द वेल्व आर इन्वॉल्व बट अंडर सर्फेस इज मच मोर इन्वॉल्व गाइज ओके एंड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट गाइज इन्फेक्टिव एंडोकार्डाइटिस कैन यू टेल द नेम ऑफ क्राइटेरिया गाइज दैट इज योक्स क्राइटेरिया रोमैटिक हार्ट डिजीज गाइड दैट इज योर जॉन्स क्राइटेरिया वेर यू हैव मेजर क्राइटेरिया and the minor criteria again this is important guys okay now coming on to few histopathy images guys okay so let's see few histopathy images guys okay so this has been taken by one of the insta pages guys i like i liked it yeah that page is really good so i took it from there guys okay let's see some important histopathy images guys okay so see this one guys which you see okay so this is basically the ground glass hepatocyte okay this looks like a ground glass hepatocyte so that is that is due to your viral hepatitis guys okay that is a uh, hbsag guys okay hepatitis b guys okay which contains hbs antigen this is also known as your australia antigen guys okay and this is stained by your orsin cicata stain guys again a important thing that can be asked in your upcoming exams okay so detected by orsin cicata now see if you see this this photo guys okay so you see some part where you have lot of cells guys and some part that is blank guys okay so we say here we say antony a bodies guys okay antony a a means a lot of cell and antony b guys okay b means blank okay that you have hardly any cells guys okay so this is a swanoma guys okay that was seen in guys neurofibromatous 2 which we read yesterday present on chromosome 22 and merlin was the location guys okay merlin gene so where are koi bodies you have antony a bodies and you have antony b which is less cellular or blank guys antony b remember b for blank and antony a remember means a lot of cells guys okay now coming on to the next one guys so this is a classical photo guys that you see in i think in your small cell cancer i think you need to know guys you cannot forget out so what happens guys this is basically as a part defect so because that nuclear chromatin is very delicate it looks out guys okay and this is small cell cancer is a neuroendocrine tumor so this will be positive for neuron specific endole cd57 bombesin guys again this is this you need to know guys you cannot miss it out guys okay and is squamous cell carcinoma okay associated with smoking and the next thing this is central guys all the s comes together if you look guys smoking central small cell guys and immunohistochemistry marker and then coming on to your paraneoplastic syndrome the thing that is so frequently asked guys okay so here for paraneoplastic remember the lung is small lung cancer guys okay so s means guys siadh okay where you have excess of adh guys okay as a result leading to oliguria l means guys lambert eaton syndrome guys a neurological disorder c means cushing syndrome that is due to increase in steroids guys again a important pyq that you need to know now coming to next one guys do you see guys this what it looks like this looks like acantha that is spine like projection guys so that is your acanthocytes or spurs cells guys that is seen in your guys remember a for acanthocyte a for a beta lipoproteinemia okay now coming on to the next one guys we have one more thing that is your birth cells guys if you remember okay so birth cells guys what is the difference between this birth cells are also known as echinocyte so how do we remember guys echinocyte here you have equal projection guys okay that is important so how do how do you don't go, get confused guys echinocyte e this can be made into a b hence echinocyte is equal to birth cell and this is seen in b and u b for bubbles and u for uremia again this you need to know now Uh, now we'll be seeing uh, guys wait within 2 minutes we'll be seeing all the uh, all the things that you find in our um hemat wala thing okay we i have one chart guys okay now coming on to guys this ependymoma guys okay so basically what happened here you have perivascular pseudo rosette again very very important guys okay so when we are talking about the pseudo rosette guys it won't be fine if we don't try uh, talk about your homeroid ka rosette guys okay so homeroid pseudo rosette ओके सो व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट होमर राइट सूडो रोजेड गाइस दिस इज सीन इन थ्री ट्यूमर्स गाइस कैन यू कैन यू टेल मी गाइस ओके सो दिस इज द थ्री ट्यूमर एम फॉर मेडुलो ब्लास्टोमा ई फॉर इविंग सार्कोमा गाइस ओके सो दिस आर द प्लेसेस वेयर यू सी होमर राइट सूडो रोजेड नाउ कमिंग ऑन टू ऑलिगो डेंडोग्लायोमा गाइस ओके सो ऑलिगो डेंडोग्लायोमा बेसिकली वेयर यू सी फ्राइड एग अपीयरेंस गाइस दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट चिकन वायर कैपिलर इज अगेन इंपॉर्टेंट गाइस ओके सो ऑलिगो डेंडोग्लायोमा यू नीड टू नो हियर दिस इज ऑल्सो सो वाई फ्राइड एग बिकॉज यू हैव अ क्लियर हेलो अराउंड इट गाइज सो ऑलिगो ऑलिगो सो यू हैव वन पी नाइनटीन क्यू को डिलीशन गाइज दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट 
again then retinoblastoma guys here you see other type that is your flexner winster so uh, flexner winster dose it guys again this is important so how do you differentiate between your flexner winster and your homerite pseudo dose it guys remember homerite pseudo dose it inside it will be pink guys p for pseudo p for pink inside guys okay and this if you see guys inside it's blank guys okay so this blank is your flexner winster, winster uh, dose it guys again this is important that you need to know okay see we'll be seeing this table uh, in some time guys okay so now uh, before that let's let's see some important one-liners that may be asked in your exam okay so let's get started with few important one-liners uh so before that we'll be seeing uh, we'll be seeing this one guys where we'll be seeing all the morphological abnormalities of rbcs in one piece okay see this is unequal projection guys seen in a beta lipoproteinemia also known as acanthocyte guys already done okay then see if you see this one guys that is the basophilic stapling that is numerous small dots guys okay seen in lead poisoning and thalassemia then dacrocyte dacro means tear if you remember your optha dacrocystitis what do we say guys okay that is acute dacro that is tear drop cells okay do you look at the photo so this is seen in myelofibrosis then degma side guys okay this degma side is the bite cells looks like someone has bite it that is g6pd deficiency okay and here you will have history of prima queen cut they the sulfur drugs they the that is again important then coming on to next one guys hoval jolly body that is the remnants guys okay so this is seen in your a splenia hypo splenia again important this is macro ovalocyte that big cells guys that is seen in your megaloblastic anemia then cystocytes guys okay cystocytes means like a fragment of rbc it has come out guys so that is in dic ttc guys okay then spherocyte a small shaped and you have sp uh, a spherical shape that is seen in your hereditary spherocytosis again very important t for target cell t for thalassemia guys also in liver disease okay so here the mnemonic is halt guys okay you have hemoglobin C disease, A for asplenia, L for liver disease, T for thalassemia. Then Hinn's body guys again seen in G6PD deficiency again very very important guys okay. And this is stained with the help of your supravital stain guys. You look at the image guys it looks so different guys here you see blue stain. So what is the name of stain guys that is either neomethylene blue guys or you can have guys brilliant chrysal okay. So this is again important guys. This ring sidroblast guys okay this is seen in your lead poisoning. Alleptocyte seen in alleptocytosis guys okay. So this was important about morphological abnormality. Now seeing some more morphological anatomy not only for anemia wala thing but WBC also guys. See this target cells already seen guys okay you see this is basically your target cell how i know the photo is not a bit clear guys but it was very good so i could not afford missing it out guys okay so this is the hinge body guys which you see it's seen in g6pd deficiency already we have seen guys okay and g6pd also shows the presence of bite cells which is referred to as degmar side guys okay now coming on to hoval jo jolly bodies guys okay so that is your basophilic nuclear remnant which is seen guys okay again this is important okay now coming on to the tear drop cells guys look at the image tear drop cells guys that is seen in your myelofibrosis guys because the bone marrow is fibrous uh, as a result this leads to dry tap guys again very very important thing guys then see you see the presence of numerous iron guys is there okay as a result it has turned blue guys okay so what is the stain of iron guys that is your pearls prussian blue stain guys if you stain it guys that tells you about your iron stores in the body so uh, what are the findings here guys okay so here iron is more more guys okay but the binding capacity is decreased guys so here you have pulse prussian blue stain guys within the mitochondria and also this can so peripheral basophilic stifling guys you can see have a look guys Okay. then then coming on guys to the next one guys in hypers in megaloblastic anemia guys what happens there is a deficiency there is a deficiency guys okay as a result what happens nuclear maturation lags behind guys okay so as a result you see the presence of hyper segmented neutrophil look at the image guys okay so at least if you if you have like uh, more than five lobes guys or at least one neutrophil with more than six lobe that is your hyper segmented neutrophil now see guys this it looks like a uh, very less of cells are there matlab, mostly fat is there guys so this is a pancytopenia means all of the count will be reduced guys okay so cell morphology is normal guys but there is a bo uh, but there is a hypocellular bone marrow with fatty infiltration guys okay now see guys if you look at the uh, cell ALL guys that is acute lymphoblastic leukemia guys so bone marrow have increased lymphoblast guys okay blast is more than 20% here guys 
then chronic lympho chronic lymphocytic leukemia guys so here you see this is mast cells guys okay so this is due to your vimentin ka defect guys again this is very important vimentin defect that is your is mast cell guys okay and he, and here this vimentin defect this is important now coming on to the next one hairy cell leukemia guys look at the hairy like projection so here boys are hairy seen in boys guys that is strap positive tartrate is resistant acid phosphate is positive and xin a1 is the marker guys okay and most accurate diagnosis is with the help of flow cytometry again important guys now see this one guys okay that is acute myeloid leukemia guys okay what do you see here guys here you see basically the criss crossing of the all dots guys okay so that is your apl and AP, apl m3 was known as guys acute promyelocytic leukemia m3 dic ka risk increase guys then coming on to C, uh, cml guys here you see various type of cells so how i have remembered cml i remembered it as a mela guys okay so various type of cells are seen so this is also known as guys college party appearance guys okay this is again important guys okay so you have college party and the convent school girl appearance guys here you have philadelphia chromosome guys okay that can be detected by fish guys and translocation is guys translocation 922 again very very important then this hodgkin's lymphoma that is red stinbuck cell all eye appearance guys it looks and that is cd15 cd30 positive okay then coming on to next one that guys bucket lymphoma so bucket lymphoma there will be be a history of child 8 to 10 years guys epstein virus infection and a history of africa would be given guys okay that is again important and this looks like a starry sky appearance with a tangible body macrophage guys this is very classical description that will come because the same description first aid first aid writes for you guys so you cannot afford missing it out okay now coming on to few micro getting guys we'll come to the type of motility okay so this tumbling motility is seen in listeria so how i remember tds falls guys okay t for tumbling d for darting that is seen in vibrio guys okay darting motility vibrio and campylobacter then your swarming motility that is seen in your proteus ho gaya clostridium ho gaya sericea ho gaya guys this shows your swarming motility guys do you have a look guys swarming guys okay so this is your swarming motility guys tumbling in listeria and falling leaf motility is seen in giardia okay giardia lamblia guys again important gliding motility in mycoplasma and spirochrit shows your cork screw motility guys look at the look at the image guys i think it, this makes it easy now coming on to some important culture media that comes from your micro aspect guys okay so see chocolate agar guys okay so you have heat in the agar so that nutrients come out guys heat is at 60 to 70 degree so this is basically used so you have factors like factor 5 nad and factor 10 hematin hence used for the growth of influenza then thier martin uh, media guys okay so this is used for neisseria so thier thier might in contain vancomycin colistin and nystatin guys okay so they have they have vancomycin okay uh, then you have uh, the trimethoprim colistin and nystatin guys okay again this is very important and here it is used for neisseria meningitis and gonorrhea guys gonorrhea causes sexually tract infection and meningitis causes meni uh, men meningitis okay then coming on to bordet bordet telapatiosis guys that is your bordet gango medium or the regen lowe medium guys okay so here you have uh, potato charcoal yeast again, again this is important guys then this is very very important guys that is your lunstein jensen media this is the classical appearance of the lunstein jensen media so this colonies are uh, described as rough tough buff colonies guys very very important guys okay so coming on to the next one guys that is your potassium telluride agar and the or uh, also tinstel agar is used guys okay that is used for clostridium diphtheria guys again important then coming to this loffler medium guys this can grow in 6 to 8 hours but this telluride agar takes for 24 to 48 hours if you count loffler guys you have 6 to 8 liters guys okay then eton agar okay this mycoplasma are also known as eton okay and th and this looks like a fried egg appearance guys you can have a look guys okay so this eton agar the bug is mycoplasma pneumonia guys okay and this requires the cholesterol okay then this is emb that is eosin methylene blue agar okay and this is used for e coli ka so you see the presence of a metallic green sheen that is again important okay now revising the cardiac path in one page guys okay so when we talk about the cardiac path guys some of the things we have already revised so we'll see the other thing guys okay so see 
फर्स्ट इज द वेजिटेशन गाइज ओके सो दिस इज योर नॉन बैक्टीरियल थ्रोमोटिक एंडोकार्डाइटिस गाइज दिस इज योर क्लासिकल फिश माउथ अपेरेंस गाइज ऑफ द मिट्रल वैल्व गाइज अगेन वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट गाइज ओके सो यू सो बेसिकली अब बेसिकली दिस थिंग्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अबाउट योर वेजिटेशन नाउ कमिंग ऑन टू एक्यूट रोमैटिक हार्ट डिजीज गाइज ओके सो यू हैव द प्रेजेंस ऑफ एशकॉफ बॉडी दिस वॉज अगेन योर पी वाई क्यू एंड दिस गाइज ओके दिस टिपिकल अपेयरेंस गाइज दिस इज द एनिशको सेल्स गाइज अगेन अ पी वाई क्यू दैट कैन बी अगेन टेस्टेड अपॉन then this uh, this lines of jan guys okay so you have alternating uh, pale pink band of platelet guys with fibrin and red band of red blood cell so this is seen in atrial thrombi guys again this is important lines of jan okay now coming on to the next one guys okay so we are coming to the tumor guys okay so we have mixed soma that is the it is the most common tumor in adult guys again important okay you remember like x okay so man have a x guys big people have x and other thing that is mixed soma okay then rhabdomyoma guys okay so that is seen in children so it is the most common cardiac tumor in children so what happens in myxoma guys you have a pedunculated mass in the atrium do you see guys pedunculated mass this is a benign mesenchymal tumor so this is a benign hematoma hematoma means hamara that is native to the origin okay and you have chondroma that is chori uh, that is that is chori ka tissue choriostoma okay guys that is some other tumor but at abnormal location so this is usually seen in ventricle and this is associated with your tuberous sclerosis guys you can you, you remember i think tsc1 and 2 guys we have guys okay that is bonvil disease wala thing hamartin tuberin chromosome 9 16 wala thing okay then this is mets metastasis is the most common cardiac tumor guys again important and breast lung melanoma lymphoma are the common source of mets guys okay then coming to your dilated cardiomyopathy guys so basically your heart is usually enlarged guys here and there is a dilation of all the chamber name indicates dilated cardiomyopathy guys okay and uh, there is a impaired contractibility because of dilation guys okay the, it cannot build up so much pressure that is impaired systolic dysfunction contraction function is lost then hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy so you will have a history of athletes that uh, that died suddenly guys something like this guys okay so you have a marked ventricle concentric hypertrophy guys okay? Okay, so you have myofibril disarray and the fibrosis again important. Also, when we are talking about this, we have one more image, guys. That is in MI. That is your triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride, guys. Thin, guys. Okay. So they can show you red part is the viable part and white part are the non-viable area. That that can also be tested uh, to you, guys. Okay. Now coming on to the next important one page revision, guys. That is your strawberry science in medicine, guys. Okay. So that is seen in scarlet fever, guys. Kawasaki disease, the vasculitis common in children, cream criteria, toxic shock syndrome, guys. This is strawberry gingiva gum seen in Wegener's granulomatis. When we talk about the Bregner's granulomatis, it is a multi-system involvement, and that is C anka positive, guys. Okay, that is cytoplasmic anka positive, and uh, this this is a uh, uh, means uh, against PR three antigen, guys. Again, this is important. Okay, this is C anka, guys. Okay, and if we talk about the P anka, guys, that is microscopic polyangiitis and Chagas toxin. No, this is strawberry hemangioma or the strawberry nevus, guys. Okay, known as the capillary hemangioma, benign condition ap uh, appearing after birth, guys. This is again so many times repeated question, guys. That is trichomoniasis. That is the strawberry cervix, guys. This can again be repeated, guys. Strawberry gallbladder seen in cholesterosis, guys. Okay, so this this was my four days before a uh, surgery MCQ, guys. They asked me this, guys. Okay, so this can again be tested, guys. This strawberry shaped skull, guys, is seen in your Edwards syndrome, guys. That is your trisomy import eighteen, where you see the rocker bottom fit, guys. Strawberry shaped nasal mass, guys. That is seen in your rhinosporidiasis caused by rhinosporidium seabury, which is a chronic granulomatous disease. Here, the uh, here the, here there is a frail polyp that may bleed, guys. Okay, so this is again important, and this was your hemangioma. This is your strawberry tongue, guys. Okay. Now coming on to one next very important thing that is the staining technique in your path, guys. Okay, so staining technique questions on staining techniques are damn common. Like they ask you every other time, guys. Okay, please bear with the photo. I know it's not so clear, guys, but I think I could not get a better photo where in one page they explain you along with the photo, guys. Okay, so this is important. See acid first stain, guys. That that is in uh, that is your mycobacterium tuber mycobacterium. So this is mycobacterium tuberculosis, guys. Okay, so that is basically twenty percent acid. First, if we talk about the TB, guys. If we talk about the lepra, guys, that is guys five percent acid. First, this is again important. Okay, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay, so you need you need to you need to know this. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, now coming on to the next one, guys. The Congo red stain, the classical that is seen in amyloid, and amyloid on gross shows a waxy appearance, guys. 
then coming on to the calcium salt guys this von kasa okay so it's like a kosa kala that is black color ka stain if you see guys that is calcium deposits there guys okay again again this is important guys this von kasa stain that is used for your calcium calcium wala thing okay and then you have also stains like calcin is also there guys okay some other stains are also there now coming on to this guys so this if you look this is a image of fungi guys okay that is india ink stain uh, seen in cryptococcus neoformans due to the polysaccharide capsule this we have already done pulse prussian blue stain used for iron stores guys okay very easy guys okay no no uh, no much uh, no much difference guys okay periodic acid this is the past stain the most commonly acid uh, stain that you see guys okay this is stain a variety of things like glomeruli basement membrane glycosan okay and this is diastase sensitive guys okay only thing that is diastase sensitive guys okay they ask you again and again guys okay now coming on to next one guys okay that is hematocylin eosin stain you see pink and blue guys the thing that you do in a first year histology the most boring part drawing the diagram in your log books then gms gomri mothamine silver stain guys this was asked in aims november 2017 okay that is silver it means it looks black guys okay then coming to alcyon blue guys this was a question that it was asked i think one year back guys okay this is again a very important pyq how do you stain the mucin guys so they may ask give you a history of guys uh goblet ce goblet cells guys that is seen in barrett esophagus they ask combine and ask you guys this is very important then coming on to bielowski stain guys that is seen in that is uh, that is used to stain the neurofibrillary plaques and the tangles wala thing guys okay so where do you see this neurofibrillary plaques and tangles guys that is see that is seen in your case of dementia guys okay again this is very important you, here you have a beta 42 and this neurofibrillary tangle guys okay this is the tau pathy guys okay and this looks like a flame cells if you look guys okay this is again very very important guys you cannot miss it out now coming on to the for elastic fiber you have vera von giesen stain guys so uh, this is used for uh, detecting fragmentation of internal elastic lamina again this is very important guys okay in giant cell arthritis then coming on to mason fontana stain guys okay so this is used for melanin guys also we have shamol stain guys for melanin this is again very important now coming on to the luna stain that is used for elastin at the mast cell guys this mast cell stain mucin wala stain this is very important alcyon blue stain then osmium tetroxide guys okay this is used for lipid guys also for lipid guys we have stains like oil red oh guys where it will appears red should sudan black b is there guys that is again important then this orsen stain guys okay so this orsen stain uh, stains the organism guys and also the elastin fiber that was hpsag and this is typical oil red oil red stain guys that you see in your lipids guys okay so uh, this was about your important stain that you need to revise before your exams guys okay so now now coming on guys to some microbiome aspect the most volatile thing that you guys always always gets confused get confused okay so now we were starting starting with the bit of your uh microbiome guys okay so we'll start with the gram positive guys okay so see this is a flow chart just for you to revise guys okay try to make a mind map guys okay so uh, try to think with the help of graph uh, with this help of flow chart guys okay so see we are starting with the gram positive cocci guys okay so gram positive cocci you have staphylococci and the streptococci guys so you need to differentiate the two guys so you do a catalyst test If it is catalyst positive, is staphylococci. If it is negative, is streptococci. Now this staphylococci again has various species. So to differentiate, we have Coagulus test. So if it is Coagulus positive or it is Coagulus negative, guys. If it is Coagulus positive, guys, that is S aureus. If it is negative, you have two things: epidermidis and saprophyticus, guys. Okay. And how do you differentiate with the help of novomycin, guys? So how do you remember, guys? See, remember the mnemonic ESR, guys. This this has been already discussed in my micro video, guys. If you want micro in more detail, guys. epidermidis is sensitive guys okay sensitive is epidermidis and saprophyticus is resistant s r e s okay you see guys this is very easy guys so this was about your coming to staphylococcus guys so staphylococcus guys the, you you have a protein c that binds to f series at toxic shock syndrome toxin 1 tst guys le leading to massive amount of release of cytokine exfoliative toxin that is staphylococcus uh, shock syndrome reiter's disease introtoxin f causes food poisoning guys then mrsa methylsin resistant altered penicillin binding protein mac a gene ka mutation guys okay so here the drug of choice would be vancomycin guys and treatment if it is not resistant sensitive nafcillin oxicillin guys if it is sensitive 
वी कैन गो फॉर एम आर एस ए वी कैन गो फॉर वेंकोमाइसिन लिनेजोलिड और डेप्टिनोमाइसिन गाइज ओके सो दिस वॉज अबाउट अबाउट योर एस ऑरियस नाउ कमिंग टू एपीडर्मिडिस एंड सेप्रोफाइटिकस सो रिमेंबर सेप्रोफाइटिकस दिस इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ यू टी आई इन द सेक्शुअली एक्टिव वीमेन गाइज अगेन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एपीडर्मिडिस गाइज दिस इनफेक्ट द प्रोस्थेटिक वैल्व गाइज अगेन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑस्टियोमाइलाइटिस इन द प्रोस्थेटिक ज्वाइन एंड दिस इज द नॉर्मल स्किन फ्लोरा so we are done with your स्टेफाइलोकोकाई का रिविजन गाइज ओके आई थिंक नो मोर कन्फ्यूजन गाइज दिस वॉज अ कैटलेस पॉजिटिव सो यू हैड अ लाइक स्लाइड वाला फोटो गाइज दैट मे बी आस्क यू बबलिंग ऑन द स्लाइड दे मे गिव यू गाइज ओके सो दिस कैटलेस पीपल विथ क्रॉनिक ग्राउंड मैटर्स डिजीज गाइज ओके which have a any pdh oxidase deficiency guys they have recurrent catalase positive in, uh, infection so what is the mnemonic for catalase positive the mnemonic is space guys s for seracea s for s aureus p for pseudomonas guys okay a pseudomonas erizonosa guys c for candida e for e coli guys okay a for aspergillus so this this are about all your catalase positive organism so now coming on to the next criteria that is a catalase negative that is your streptococcus guys so we have alpha hemolysis alpha alpha hemolysis beta hemolysis gamma hemolysis guys so see re- try to remember the organism first guys then we'll try to differentiate guys uh, alpha hemolysis we have two organism that we need to differentiate one is one is your guys uh, s pneumonia and other is the viridens streptococci guys okay so how you do you differentiate both guys we differentiate with the help of optocin guys okay so this viridens guys okay viridens is a optocin resistance thing and this is bile insoluble guys okay and this pneumonia okay this causes meningitis pneumonia other things so you will have a capsule that is positive coulomb reaction again very important guys okay and this uh, for causing meningitis and respiratory infection it needs to have a iga protease guys okay and this is the most common cause of guys okay uh, same thing like uh, we did for hemophilus hemop guys okay that is meningitis otitis media pneumonitis and sinusitis treatment you can give a third generation cephalosporin or penicillin something like this guys okay now coming on to the dense guys okay this with a d4 remember dant guys okay dance remember dant guys that is the dental care is again very important this can cause your subacute endocarditis again very very important guys you need to know now coming on to the beta hemolysis guys so you have group b streptococci uh, so you have two things the one is mm, group a and group b guys group a is streptococcus pyogenes guys group b is streptococcus agalactis remember group b this is guys the one that is seen in babies guys so this can cause sepsis meningitis in baby again very very important guys that is scam positive again you need to know now coming on to the group a guys okay so how to differentiate you have bacitracin wala thing guys okay so this group a streptococci is sensitive guys okay this group b baby is resistant guys bacitracin resistant this is important so this can cause scarlet fever that that is again the uh, strawberry all appearance strawberry tongue it can cause uh, it can lead to guys your rheumatic heart disease guys again very important john's criteria that you need to know j for joint involvement o make a heart of it that is heart card diitis n min nodule subcutaneous nodule e for erythema marginitum s for syndeham chorea guys here you have aso titer positive guys and this can also cause superentism leading to massive release of cytokine now coming on to no hemolysis guys so you have group d step to Okay, known as the enterococci. The importance is that it can grow in bile, forty percent bile and six point five percent NaCl, guys. So enterococcus faecalis, guys, that causes biliary tract infection. non enterococci that grows uh, that uh, growth in only bile not salt guys that is streptococcus bovis this is again very very important guys this causes subacute endocarditis and colon cancer this is again a pyq that may be tested upon now coming on to guys gram positive gram uh, so we have done with this gram positive ka cocci guys okay now coming on to gram positive bacilli guys when we talk about the gram positive bacilli we have clostridium guys okay so uh, having a look at the clostridium guys okay so clostridium we have tetani botulinum perfringens and difficile guys tetani already done that acts presynaptically inhibits the release of glycine and gaba guys this can cause opisthotonus pleurosthotonus guys we have two toxin tetanospasmin and tetanolysin guys lysin does not have work spasmin as the name indicates it will cause spasm of the muscle it cleaves the snare protein guys there is no re- uh, release of glycine and gaba from the renso cells guys okay treatment you can you can give a antitoxin guys that is clostridium uh, tetanus and diphtheria toxoid are there that can be given guys now coming to clostridium botulinum so you have infant botulism guys that ca- that is due to honey cane food guys okay this is again very important it prevents the release of acetylcholine leading to the flaccid paralysis okay now this clostridium is a obligate anaerobe again you need to know guys okay this is this is again very important this clostridium clostridium uh, anaerobe which you need to know you cannot forget out okay so this bacillus clostridium they are anaerobe guys okay that is important 
Oh, then coming to clostridium perfringens, guys, that causes gas gangrene due to open wound, guys. So here, clostridium perfringens shows uh, alpha toxin, guys, lecithinase, guys. Okay, so here it shows positive Naegler's reaction, guys. That is again important. And here you see double hemolysis on your blood agar. Then clostridium difficile is associated with antibiotic associated diarrhea that is pseudomembranous colitis that is due to antibiotic use. Treatment oral metronidazole or vancomycin guys. Here you have two toxins. Toxin A, B. A, B is for basically binding guys and A, uh, A binds to the breast border of the gut causes pseudomembranous colitis. Now coming on to the other ones guys okay that is your listeria guys okay so this listeria guys okay so basically this is the only gram positive organism to produce uh, normally endotoxin are produces by gram negative guys but this produces uh, lipopolysaccharide endotoxin again important uh, then this causes neonatal meningitis guys you have three organisms that causes neonatal meningitis the mnemonic is gel G for group B streptococcus E for E. coli and L for listeria guys okay this is a facultative intracellular beta hemolytic guys catalyst positive organism again important guys okay that you need to know now coming on to this bacillus guys so this clostridium was a non-spore forming anaerobe this bacillus is a spore forming anaerobe guys okay this is again very important this is only bacteria with the help of uh, in a polypeptide capsule that is d poly d glutamate capsule guys so we have cutaneous anthrax guys okay we have pulmonary anthrax this cutaneous anthrax is known as the hyde potter's disease guys you have a blackish scar this pulmonary anthrax is known as the wool sorter disease that is due to the inhalation of spore it can cause hemorrhage mandistinitis and shock and bacillus you have one more species bacillus series that causes food poisoning similar to the staphylococcus aureus here you have uh, okay here you have a history of basically uh, basically food poisoning due to cellulite toxin guys one to six are uh, there and do you have chinese chinese uh, khana ka history chinese fried rice ka history okay then coming then coming on guys to the mycobacterium we know that mycobacteria is acid fast so that is gene nielsen positive that is again that is again important guys okay so what what are the steps you guys you have carbol fish in okay then you have then you have heat guys okay then you have alcohol or acetone oh then you have malachite green so you can remember the mnemonic is class has asked mnemonic guys okay so that summarizes your uh, principle for your acid fast stain so now mycobacterium tb guys that grows in lewinston jensen media guys tb wala media that produces rough tough colonies how does the clinical features guys fever night sweat weight loss evening rise of temperature hemoptysis it can go into the vertebra that is known as pots osteomyelitis guys and here there is a cord factor which is the virulence factor guys again very important treatment hrjd isoniazide rifampicin in pyrazinamide uh, ethambutal guys mycobacterium can see that is a tb like features mycobacterium in in avm inter m mac infection the infection that is seen in disseminated cases guys uh, in aids where the cd4 count is less than 50 treatment uh, treatment you have basically prophylaxis guys okay then mycobacterium uh, leprate that causes the leprosy guys so you have you have your classification guys where you where you have poles guys that is your uh, diddle and jopling classification borderline borderline tuberculoid okay lepromat tuberculide you have the poles guys okay so lepromatous and tuberculide are the two extreme poles guys treatment you have uh, dapson and rifampicin guys okay and clofazamine guys these three drugs are used for the treatment now coming on to the branching filament guys so acid fast adobe that is a no cardia guys actinomyces guys it is not acid first guys okay that is not acid first guys uh, and this is a anaerobe guys so we read about three uh, three anaerobe guys okay so what are the three anaerobes that we read in this space guys so remember the mnemonic cannot breathe air okay c for clostridium b for bacillus okay then a for your actinomyces guys these are the three organism that is anaerobe guys okay so basically this actinomyces mysis looks like a mouth so basically your sinus tract uh, axis and mouth involvement this all will be seen guys okay this actinomyces is rarely produces the sulfur granules guys okay this is again important this no cardia guys causes pulmonary infection in icu and other thing okay and treatment is sulfonamides guys okay so mnemonic is s n a p snap that is sulfonamides okay treat the no cardia and this actinomyces is treated by penicillin guys okay this is your mnemonic that is your snap mnemonic so this was all all you need to know about the gram positive guys okay so i have tried to summarize it like very fast okay the gra entire gram positive guys okay now coming on to the next very high table that you need to know guys okay that is your gram negative ka table 
दैट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द ग्राम नेगेटिव गाइज अगेन वी नीड टू नो गाइज कि क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन पूछा गया है दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो फर्स्ट इज ग्राम नेगेटिव का कोकाई गाइज ओके सो ग्राम नेगेटिव कोका यू हैव ओनली थ्री डिफरेंशियल दैट इज एन वी एम दैट इज वेनम यू कैन रिमेंबर निसीरिया मोडेक्सेल एंड वेन्यू लेना दिस टू दे डो नॉट आस्क यू सो द आंसर इज ऑलवेज एंड ऑलवेज निसीरिया गाइज सो निसीरिया हैव गोनोरिया मैन इंटाइटिस गाइज ओके सो सी बोथ ऑफ दैम दिस निसीरिया एंड गोनोरिया इफ यू टॉक अबाउट गाइज वन इज द निसीरिया का वन इज द गोनोरिया गाइज ओके ओके दिस इज द निसीरिया दिस इज द गोनोरिया ओके सो सी बोथ ग्लूकोज फर्मेंट है बोथ ऑफ दैम आर ग्लूकोज फर्मेंट है गाइज ओके एंड दिस मैनिंज मैनिजी गाइज दिस कंटेन्स एम सो दिस इज अ माइल्टोज फर्मेंट है दिस डो नॉट कंटेन एम गाइज सो दिस इज अ नॉन माइल्टोज फर्मेंट है गाइज दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट ओके दे ग्रोज इन थियर मार्टिन मीडिया गाइज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डन गाइज यू हैव वैनकोमाइसिन पॉलीमिक्सिन स्टैटिन गाइज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डन वैनकोमाइसिन इनिबिट द ग्राम पॉजिटिव पॉलीमिक्सिन ग्राम नेगेटिव एंड स्टेटिन इनिबिट्स द ग्रोथ ऑफ फंगाई दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो सी दिस निसीरिया अगेन दिस कॉज इज मैनिजाइटिस ऑल सो वेन यू हैव निसीरिया गाइज ओके सी फाइव टू सी नाइन टर्मिनल कॉम्प्लीमेंट का डिफिशियंसी डेट कैन कॉज डिसमिनेटेड निसीरिया इन्फेक्शन गाइज दिस इज अगेन दिस हैज आई जी ए प्रोटेस इन सच कॉज मैनिजाइटिस हैज टू गो डीप इन साइड दिस मैनिजाइटिस हैज टू गो डीप इन साइड लाइक स्टेप्टोकोकस निमोनिया सो दिस हैज अ कैप्सूल गाइज ओके सो दिस कॉजेज मेनिंगाइटिस इन चिल्ड्रेन एडल्ट एंड दिस कैन कॉज बाई लैटरल एडिनल हेमरेज नोन एज योर वाटर हाउस फ्रेडिक्शन इन रोमैन फॉर प्रोफाइल एक्सेस यू हैव रिफाम बेस इन गोनोरिया कॉजेज गोनोरिया दैट इज सेक्शुअली ट्रांसमिटेड का इन्फेक्शन गाइज इट डज नॉट हैव एनी कैप्सूल गाइज ओके नो वैक्सीन ड्यू टू डैपिड एंटीजेनिक वेरिएशन सो यू हैव हियर यू हैव अ क्रीमी प्रूल एंड डिस्चार्ज गाइज ओके दिस कैन कॉज न्यूनेटल कंजंगटी वाइटिस दिस कैन ऑल्सो कॉज फिट सक कटिस सिंड्रोम दो द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज इज क्लेम माइडिया हियर स्टराइल पायूरिया न्यूरिन कल्चर इज देयर एंड ट्रीटमेंट थर्ड जनरेशन से फैलोस्पोरिन दैट इज योर सिफ्ट ट्राइऑक्सोन now coming on to the so we have talked about gram negative diplococci now coming on to gram negative uh, rod shaped cocci guys okay so you have hemophilus pastorella brucella bordetella guys if someone talks about the hemophilus guys so emop that is epiglottitis meningitis otitis media guys see emop do you see bronchopneumonia treatment amoxicillin and clavulanic acid guys this grows on the chocolate agar the brown colored agar that i showed you factor 5 and factor 10 guys this again cause meningitis so again it this has a capsule guys this can undergo transformation then now coming on to this pastorella so you have pastorella multocida guys that is due to the cat or dog bite just remember this cat and cellulite is pastorella okay uh, like like you are craving for a pastry remember like the c for cat and c for cellulite is okay pastry then brucella guys you have brucella what is swiss that is basically due to the matlab uh, the zoonosis wala thing is there so you have uh, unpasteurized dairy animal bathing brucellosis also known as the undulant fever guys again important then your bordetella guys this bordetella causes whooping cough for the 100 day cough guys this is important here you have bordet gango media guys again important and you have pertussis exo exotoxin guys which you need to know okay then coming on to the next one guys okay then coming coming on to coming on to the gram negative rod guys okay so you have lactose fermenter and non lactose fermenter when we talk about the lactose fermenter on mac only mac conchi agar that will appear pink in color guys what are the component of your mac conchi guys that is peptone lactose agar uh, agar sodium tetrachloride guys and neutral red which is the indicator guys and t4 tetrachloride so when we talk about the lactose fermenter we have e coli klebsiella guys okay so we need to differentiate an enterobacter and if we talk about the non lactose fermenter guys we have shigella salmonella guys uh, proteus and also pseudomonas and h pylori but this three are oxidase negative guys ssb are oxidase negative and oxidase positive guys you have pseudomonas and h pylori that is pp guys pseudomonas and h pylori guys okay now coming on to one by one guys if we talk about the e coli ka organism guys okay so we'll start with a klebsiella so klebsiella again causes pneumonia guys so this is again uh, sorry meningitis pneumonia so this is this has a capsule this can cause a may cause a struvite stone not so common cause of struvite stone guys okay the common cause of struvite stone is the proteus guys okay that is again urea is positive so this causes pneumonia klebsiella pneumonia Rem remember guys this is very important this causes red current jelly sputum guys okay this is very important that you need to know uh, red current jelly sputum okay 
also also this seracea marsins they can cause pseudo hemoptysis that appears red color now coming on to the various strains of e coli this is the number one cause of e coli this can cause neonatal meningitis already done sepsis endotoxin because this is a gram negative guys this grown eosin methylene blue agar emb ka agar that is metallic sun we have already seen guys now coming on to various strain we have ehec name indicates intro hemorrhagic e coli causes hemorrhage that is his stain is 0157S7. You have Siga like endotoxin, guys. Okay. Then entrotoxigenic. Remember T4 travelers died here, guys. So we have heat labile toxin and the heat stable toxin. Labile like the air, that is C A M P. Stable like the ground, that is C G M P, guys. Intro invasive E. coli, that is invading, so it will cause bloody diarrhea, guys. Okay. Then EPEC, P for pediatric or pathogenic, guys. Here you don't have any toxin production. Now coming on to CLA, guys. So the CGA ectotoxin in inactivates the 60S ribosome, guys. Okay. So they can also enhance cytokinolysis causing hemolytic uremic syndrome. This CGA causes your Dieter's arthritis, guys, where you have CUP, conjunctivitis, urethritis, and periarthritis, guys. Okay. Treatment again, amoxicillin, ampicillin, guys. This all things. Then salmonella, guys. Okay. Salmonella has a presence of capsule, guys. Okay. And you have antigenic variation, guys. That is O antigen, H antigen, guys. Salmonella typhi that causes the Vidal test. Wala thing. You have rose spots, guys. Okay. Uh, important. It can remain in the gallbladder, leading to a chronic carriage. The, the typical classical example of the typhoid Mary guys okay also this can this is very important from the ortho point that it causes osteomyelitis in sickle cell anemia guys that you need to know then coming to proteus guys this is again urease positive organism guys okay proteus is sw swarming guys this has already been done guys okay this is again important treatment ampicillin amoxicillin now coming on to the oxidase positive species that is pseudomonas the most common cause of hospital acquired infection guys pseudomonas whenever you heard of pseudomonas think somewhere blue green pigment they will ask you and you have exotoxin a that in, in inactivates the elongation factor too same is the mechanism of action of guys uh, corny bacterium diphtheria it inhibits the adp ribosilation of elongation factor too so this causes recurrent uh, recurrent respiratory tract infection in a cystic fibrosis patient burn wound patient hot tube folliculitis all uh, osteomyelitis and all malignant otitis media in diabetes mellitus ichthyoma gangrenosum guys all of the things that is very important uti h pylori h pylori causes basically peptic ulcer disease which may be duodenal type of ulcer and more common guys okay gastric ulcer has a bad prognosis guys duodenal ulcer where you have increase in night pain guys okay uh, so you uh, you don't uh, find like eating food guys okay so uh, this causes type b gastritis we have type a type b a is autoimmune guys b is basically the bacteria wala gastritis guys and fecal breath test would be positive guys so here you use a triple drug therapy for the treatment then coming on to the comma shaped oxidase positive that is your campylobacter jejuna that is your comma shaped organism guys so this causes bloody diarrhea this can cause guillain barre syndrome very very important guys that you need to know about your guillain barre syndrome it is a parallel this is that is the essence up and may this the diaphragm guys okay that is your that is your so remember bilateral paralysis that symmetrically ascends up guys again important that you need to know he, here you can see oligoclonal band guys okay symmetric ascending muscle weakness csf protein with normal protein count increase in protein but count is normal that is known as your oligoclonal band guys in csf this is a, then coming on to the Vibrio cholera that is oxidase positive guys okay so this grows in alkaline media guys okay and for transportation you have basically this causes rice water diarrhea guys this is again important you have vaccine like ty21a typhi oral vaccine guys this was about this was about your uh, gram negative uh, gram negative ka classification guys so basically i have tried to cover so much of gram positive and gram negative guys in like 15 20 minutes more of gram positive and gram negative is not possible to be to say the truth guys okay there is actually a lot guys to cover from gram positive and gram negative so we'll see we'll see some of some of some of the more important things in this video guys okay so see next coming on to the next high important thing that is your x guys okay so systoma hematobium guys that is your terminal spine guys okay that is seen in your hematobium guys okay that is again important Sisto, uh, cystosoma japonicum guys at a time when there was there was a month hiroshima and nagasabi it went ru uh, matlab rudimentary guys okay so basically it has slightly lateral knob okay this is in the superior mesentric plexus then man sony it is in the inferior mesentric plexus japan now the japan is superior so it is in the superior mesentric plexus diphylobotrum latum guys okay which is a matlab, which has a lead over the top operculum of the lead guys okay so 
this is the only cystode with the upper cloated egg and this is the largest diphylobothrium latum this is known as fish type one trichuris trichuria guys okay do you see barrel shaped eggs and you have trichuris trichuria tri tri is coming two times so barrel sh barrel shaped at both the end guys mucus plug then this this has been asked so many times guys this egg this egg has been repeated so many times then introbius vermicularis you see the tadpole shaped larva inside it guys that is the plano convex okay ankylostoma duodenal guys okay so this uh, so this is basically hookworm guys looks like a multiple hook is there guys with four to eight blastomere so this was about uh, this was about your ex axinor microbio guys okay that is important see then coming on to few more important see this is strawberry we have already done guys that this is very important this is strawberry gallbladder cholestrosis is very important guys okay red tongue is in scarlet fever already done guys strawberry gingiva in bagners and strawberry nose in your rhinosporidiasis guys okay now coming on to the important list of autoantibodies that you need to know guys so when we talk about the systemic lupus erythematosus guys sle which we talked about guys so where you have the male ras and there is a sparing of the nasolabial fold so what is the most sensitive antibody that is your anti-nuclear antibody specific is your smith antibody drug induced guys antihistone this is a so many times repeated question drug causing uh, uh drugs causing lupus guys remember the sipd drug guys okay as for sulfur drug that is isoniazide i am as for hydralazine guys bp wala drug i am isoniazide ka drug cat a gene mutation is there guys procanamide and d for dapson then anti neuronal antibodies seen in uh, neuron that is in the brain that is lupus nephron lupus uh, cere cerebritis then anti beta 2 like uh, glycoprotein that is seen in secondary apla anti cardiolipin guys that is seen uh, in your apla syndrome anti phospholipid anti syndrome now coming on to some more antibodies guys okay see when you have generalized scleroderma guys you have topo isomerase body and when you have limited scleroderma guys uh you you have centromere antibody so remember you are limited to the center remember like this guys so that you don't make confuse this question i made mistake in my last gt guys okay so crest syndrome this limited is known as the crest syndrome you are localized to the center guys crest syndrome then you have u1 riponucleoprotein p antibody not so important anti rho and anti la guys okay this rho antibody is seen in your neonatal loop lupus guys rona when child cries you get sensitive okay so this is seen in your neonatal lupus and uh, rho is also known as ssa lies known as ssb that is seen in your jogden syndrome anti tissue peroxidase in your hashimoto thyroiditis lats long acting thyroid stimulator seen in your graves disease guys okay actually b8 positive anti mitochondrial ma wala in, uh, antibody remember ma bt that is biliary cirrhosis Pianka, okay, you have you it's seen in primary sclerosing cholangitis, microscopic cholangitis, Chug Strauss syndrome, guys. Okay, anti Saccharomyces cerevisiae that is seen in your Crohn's disease, guys. Okay, and anti acetylcholine receptor antibody seen in your case of myasthenia gravis, guys. Okay, now having a look at the autopsy techniques, guys. Uh, okay, so we have technique techniques where uh, where you, uh, how you do the autopsy basically after the death, uh, you have a look uh, look at the body, guys. So virtue technique, this is the most common method used guys, okay. So this is the virtue trait that you need to know where you have hypercoagulated thrombosis and stasis which is a part of general path guys, okay. So this virtue, he coined the term path guys, okay. He is known as the father of modern path. He gave the fifth sign of inflammation guys, okay. That is loss of function known as the functional ESA guys, okay. Now coming on to the, now, uh, now virtue technique guys. Virtue technique is the organs are removed one by one guys, okay. So this is the most common technique that is used for the process of autopsy rocky tansky technique guys in situ you are dissecting guys and that only you are dissecting gons technique guys okay so that is in block removal of the organ and lacteal technique so this is in mass removal guys one of this question is very very much like likely to be repeated then types of incision you can give a i-shaped incision y-shaped incision starting at the neck guys or the modified y that starts starts from the stylite process guys again this is important okay now coming on to the types of bullets when we talk about guys okay so first we have dum dum bullet that was found in around the kolkata dum dum area airport so hence the name dum dum bullet here that uh, tip is chiseled out guys okay and then frangible bullets so basically fragments it breaks down into fragment on hitting the target then you have incendiary bullet guys okay the bullet is filled with white phosphorus that ignites guys okay so look at the end guys looks like it will ignite then you, then you have guys ricochet bullet guys okay so bullet first strikes an immediate object and then after being reflected strikes the target guys okay means a ulta path detect guys okay 
that they are confused guys remember they go strike then again come guys then souvenir bullet bullet which gets retained in the body for the long time and then covered by the fibrous tissue then tandem bullet guys or uh, piggy pack bullet guys two bullets are rejected one after the other guys okay because uh, the fire armor not used for long time as a result they are malfunctioning so two bullets goes at a time then tracer bullet 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 which leaves a trace behind that is the tracer mark guys okay then tumbling bullet bullet that tumbles around guys okay rotates end to end then yawning bullet guys which travels in a irregular fashion guys and produces a keyhole in tribune guys okay so see this was this was your marker guys Hemo, uh, stem cell ka marker everything cd marker this we have already revised guys okay yes study if you have not seen please check it out guys and have a look revise it once again guys okay now coming on to some named cells guys we have anishka or the caterpillar cells already done seen in rheumatic heart disease this is the appearance guys this is the crumple tissue paper already done yesterday guys this is this was asked in last last time i nsa in the november i nsa clue cells that is that is seen in bacterial vaginosis caused by gardenella vaginalis and this follows the amsels criteria guys ph is more than 4.5 again very important and this has a positive whiff test now coming to the fried egg already done oligodendroglyma today only done guys then globoid cells guys that is crabage disease guys okay then hallmark cell seen in a kid hallmark cell or the kidney like cell guys do you have a look guys that is seen in alkcl then signet ring cells seen in crook and tumor that is a mats guys okay to the ovary bilateral symmetrical enlargement of the ovary then lepidic cell cardiac myxoma guys that is most common tumor in adult we saw today mod cells guys you see like a mod guys that is seen in multiple myeloma you can also have a duchess cell a spider cell seen in rhabdomyoma that is the most common tumor in the child guys okay so uh, this was this was all about today guys okay so we'll be uh, will hopefully doing the next part guys as soon as i get time i'm not sure when we'll do, be doing the next part guys i hope you like the video guys please do comment like share subscribe and share with your friends Happy learning. Best of luck for your exam, guys.